before we pick this week's games, let's highlight last week's. And for the third straight week, it was Meatloaf. Two out of three ain't bad. Hey, I'll take two out of three. Notre Dame, slight favorite against Michigan State, but they end up winning convincingly against the Spartans. So there's a win. Also a win, but in backdoor cover style, I guess you could say. A&M a three-point favorite against Arkansas. This game went back and forth, went to overtime. A&M beating Arkansas by a touchdown. So there's a win. But I lost and lost big on Oklahoma State. They were favored by double digits and not only did not cover, but lost by double digits. So I got gacked in that one. So there's your loss. Since the coin was identical on the picks as yours truly, obviously the coin went two out of three as well. So after four weeks, I'm at seven and five, maintaining my two-game lead over the coin, who's now at five and seven. Now let's go ahead and highlight this week's games. Remember, if the coin lands on heads, it likes the favorite. Tails is going to go with the underdog. Let's begin with the Friday game from Pullman, Washington. Top 20 showdown, USC at Washington State. The Trojans at times this year have not looked like a top five squad, but they've gotten the job done. And I think when this team is focused and when they take a game seriously, they can be one of the best teams in the country. Big thing for Sam Darnold, keep the interceptions down. I think he'll do that against the Cougars. And it looks like uh, Ronald Jones and Deontay Burnett will play for USC. A couple of offensive weapons, they're listed as probable, so that helps. Washington State's done good so far this year, but this will be a different beast that they'll be facing in USC's offense. So give me USC for a late Friday night kickoff. It doesn't kick off till 9.30 Oklahoma time, 10.30 on the East Coast. But give me the Trojans minus a three and a half. And the coin, it's going to go with Washington State. Now we're going to go to Saturday. Georgia against Tennessee, and the Bulldogs, man, are they for real. As last week, they beat the other Bulldogs from the SEC in Mississippi State and beat them handily. You know, Georgia is winning despite the fact that they don't have Jacob Eason, their starting quarterback. I know Georgia may not score a lot of points on the road, and they're giving seven points, but the bottom line is I don't think Georgia's going to need a lot of points to win this game. I'm trying to figure out, other than defense, how Tennessee is going to be able to score and keep up with Georgia. I don't think it's going to happen. Tennessee struggled with UMass this past week, but did get the win. But Georgia, yeah, that's on a whole nother level. So give me the Bulldogs in Knoxville, minus the seven. And the coin, give it one good flip here. There we go. And it is going to go with Georgia as well. And finally, Big 12. Primetime Oklahoma State coming off that surprising loss against undefeated Texas Tech in Lubbock. This line opened at two touchdowns. It's now down to nine and a half. But I'm going to go for the total in this game, which is at 81 points. For Texas Tech, this will be the best offense that they faced all season long. I think Oklahoma State, after that four turnover game, will make amends after what happened last week. But on the other hand, Oklahoma State's defense, they have big time problems. TCU exposed them big time. So you got it. Look for a West Texas shootout, and I think it's going to go over 81 points. So give me the over when it comes to the total, which is 81, and the coin, if it lands on heads, likes the favorite, which in this case would be the over. Tails is going to go with the under, and it's going to go with the under. It thinks that there's going to be less than 81 points in this matchup. Those are my picks for the week. What were yours? Just a reminder, next week at this time, we'll do it all again. We'll have another installment of my three picks. Got to go to my real job now. Catch you next time.